Yeah. Or conclude our series. I'm going to conclude the series. Whoa. Well, it is, it's been fun going through Galatians. It is one of my favourite books. I always, I remember as a kid being brought up to remember where Galatians was. And it was, get every policeman converted. Which was Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. And do you know what? I've always um, remembered that. Then another friend gave me another one, which in... Probably in the context of this book is actually a much better one, which is Gentiles eat pigs continually. So that I think it kind of fits quite nicely into Gent- Galatians. After all, the big message is you're free, you're free from the law. Am I not on? Well, I was having fun. I am now. There we are. So I'm sure you heard me anyway because I'm quite loud. And um, but I come to conclude this just to. Uh, for next week, we're starting a new series, and we're going to look at Jonah. Because uh, in the heat, it just suddenly felt, actually, there's a lot in Jonah about heat and, and wanting to escape. <laughs> so <laughs> so we'll, we'll get into that. Well, it's been, it's, it was great. Sorry I couldn't be with you last week. I suddenly uh, had, it was all my balance had gone. It was a very strange kind of, I don't know, infection. I think... I, you know, it was vertigo from you, Jenny. But then I suddenly threw up just before. I didn't know vertigo was contagious, but obviously it was. And uh, so, yeah, I was out of action for a little bit, but um, it's good to be with you. Anyway, Galatians. Go look at chapter 6 today and end the series. We started the series looking, Andrew Wilson, we used his talk, and uh, he talked about Galatians like a Russian doll with three bits. The little doll in the middle is that Galatians is a personal gospel in it. There's a personal gospel. There's good news for you as an individual. You have been set free by your faith in Jesus to have eternity with him. As a result, you don't need to follow the Jewish law. You don't need to be circumcised. (laughs) And you are now, but faith in Jesus is a personal. So for it says, for freedom, Christ has set you free. That little doll is then put into another doll, which is the corporate gospel. That actually, by our faith, we are added into a family. We're added into a family, and we're added into it, not because of our own standard or any human standard, but pure and simply by your faith in God. You're in a family where you belong because of your relationship in Jesus, not because of the way you've lived, not because of your actions, not because of your background, not because of your skin colour, not because of your sexuality, but because of who you are in Christ. And so Paul writes, there's no Jew, there's no Gentile, there's no male or female. This new community is one where we come because of our relationship in Christ. We're one in Christ. Therefore, the church is designed to be the most diverse socially diverse community on earth. And what's amazing, there's a a news report from two years ago that said, looking around the world, the most diverse community you will find is the church in any place because it should be open to everybody. It should be the most welcoming, caring, loving community there is. Inside, the next doll was the global gospel. You've got the personal gospel for you, the community, the corporate gospel that you're added into a family, then the global one, which is there's a new creation. The present age is gone, so there's no need for circumcision. I don't think I've ever used circumcision so much in any sermons as we have going through Galatians. And there are going to be a few more mentions today, but there's no part of the new creation because Christ has changed everything. And today we're going to end the series and we're going to look at boasting. I want to end by having a good old boast. And uh, as I said in my text I sent out, it's going to be really, really good. And I'm allowed to say that. But anyway, we're going to have fun. I'm actually going to just read the last uh, few verses. Galatians 6, there's so much in it. You could actually have a whole sermon series in this. It's got all the elements of the personal gospel, the corporate gospel, the global gospel. They're all there. Bear one another's burst burdens to fill the law. It's, it's full of great things. They're worth reading. But I want to look at this. Verse 11. See what large letters I'm writing to you with my own hand. I love that. So, you know, big large letters that Paul is writing. It is those who want to 
make a good showing in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised and only in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. As, as all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. For now on, let no one cause me trouble. For I bear on, on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, Spirit. Amen. We live in a world where there are lots of boasts. There was a boast last week. It's coming home. It was a boast. It's coming home. Sadly, it looked at the crowd and decided it didn't want to come home. But it was going to actually, you know, it it thought, you actually, Rome looks much nicer. But it's going to, you know, there's a boast. I, I must confess, I slightly miss Donald Trump being on Twitter because. There, were, there was a certain element of his boasting. I think my favourite one he ever did was this. I like, the new Pope is a very humble man, very much like me, which is probably why I like him so much. <laughs> it was just, we boast. In fact, Paul boasts a lot in the Bible. In, he talks about boasting. In Romans, it talks about boasting. In 2 Corinthians, whole passage on boasting. The Old Testament is full of boasting. And in fact, as we've gone through the Psalms, it's amazing how often you hear, I will boast, I will boast. They boast in this, I will boast. It's amazing. And yet it re- I realised, I have never in my life preached on boasting. Never seen it as a subject. This is my first time preaching on boasting. Maybe because we think of boasting like that of a six-year-old. My dad's bigger than your dad. You know, that sort of, that boasting, that kind of, you know, I'm the king of the castle, you're the dirty rascal, that sort of, we kind of see it. But actually, as we look at this, we see that boasting is quite different. All of us probably have had those embarrassing moments where we boasted about something, and then very soon it fell apart. I remember many years ago, many years ago, when I was a Cub Scout, being in a swimming gala, and I was in the float race, and I had won it easily the year before, diving in, doing the 25 metre, no, the 50 metre, oh, it was long, 50 metre float race, you had to hit the wall and then come back the other side. And I remember, I, I'd won it. And I remember turning up to the uh, top of Marlow Hill in High Wycombe and I turned up and I remember saying to people, don't worry, uh, we've got the float race, I'm going to win that one. And everyone said, yeah, we know you've got that one. Came in, I dived in and my float shot off. So I had to swim to get the float. I picked up the float and sure enough, I won the race. Sadly, I was then disqualified because you're not allowed to swim if you go in the float race. It's for non-swimmers. And I was disqualified. And so I didn't win, and my boast came to absolutely nothing. And we'll see as we go through this that so often boasts come to nothing. Today I want to look at three things. Boasting is alive and kicking and very much part of our lives. Boasting is inevitable. It's a feature of human life. And thirdly, there is only one solution to how we handle boasting. So firstly, boasting is alive and kicking. So we need to understand, how did Paul see boasting in the ancient world? How did he understand it? What was it? And and so often boasting is linked to those going into battle. So Goliath, when he comes before David and he stands there, his boast is, look at me, I'm going to make your flesh be ripped to shreds. (laughs) Because of his size and because of who he is. Then you have the king of Assyria, when he comes before the people of God, he says, has any gods and nations delivered his hand out of the hand of the king of Assyria? It's a boast before battle. It's the boast as they're coming out, crying out. I love this one. You'll find in, in 1 Kings 20, Ben-Hadad sent to him and said, the gods do so to me and me also, if the dust of Samaria shall suffice for handfuls for all the people who follow me. I like that, this this boast. The gods do to me also, if this does not happen, 
That'd be fun to add that to our normal conversation, wouldn't it? In Tesco's. Let God's do to me also if you don't give me a discount. You know, kind of like, it's, sort of, it's a threat. But what about this as a reply? The king of Israel said, tell him, let not one who straps on him his armor boast. Let the one who takes it off boast. I love that. Not let the one who straps on his armor boast. Let the one who takes off his armor boast. Cool, that's a, that's a great boast. See, it's common practice. You see it all through the Old Testament. There's, there's, as they're coming into war, there's a boast of confidence. Look at what we're going to do. We see it in the movies. Boast in the movies. What we do in life echoes in eternity. Gladiator. That's a great boast. Here's one that's already been mentioned in this series. They may take our lives, but they will never take our freedom. It's a boast. What about this one? Do you feel lucky, punk? <laughs> or I'll be back. They're boasts. They're boasting based on their confidence in something that they've got. It may be their size, it may be their strength, it may be their courage, it may be their speed, it may be their skills, it may be their weapons, it may be their, their gods, but they're boasting. We see it in sport. The boast in sport. The hucker. Oh, I'm not going to do it. Could it be? But actually, in a sense, of actually, the hucker was there, there doing that. Their it's a boast. Look at us. You can't beat us. <laughs> anyway, they can't. It's a boast. In politics, make America great again. It's a boast. Strong and stable leadership is a boast. Take back control is a boast. They're all boasts. Adverts, they're boasts. The best a man can get. Gillette, seriously, this is it? <laughs> you know, I got a Gillette razor. I'm thinking, this is the best a man can get? This is all it is all about. I've got my Gillette razor. Woohoo! Life is good. Seriously? It's a boast. Social media, dare I say, is one giant boast. It's just one giant boast. Look at my life. And actually, boasts can be good and bad. We can boast in when things are going well, and we can boast in saying, hey, you've not had it as bad as me. <laughs> in fact, I almost can be proud in how bad it is, and we'll see. It's funny how sometimes we can even boast in our weaknesses to make us feel better. The biggest challenge is this. Boasting can get into the church. It can get into the church. How big's your church? My church is bigger than your church. Our church is more biblical than your church. Oh, our God has more, our church has more encounters than your church. It can get into the spirit. And we've got to watch what is it we boast in. Boasts are based on where our security, where our confidence comes from. It's our ultimate confidence. We hope, or we're trying to believe, that this boast may be true. That is where it comes from. So I want to look at the second thing is, boasting is actually inevitable. We boast because that's who we are. We're standing on something. This is our defense. This is our protection. This is our hope. This is our, the boast is, this is what we are. And why do we boast? Because we're going to die. <laughs> we come to the Psalm 49 that we looked at this week. It is the funniest psalm in some ways. And this is the context of the psalm, okay? It starts off by the psalmist saying at the beginning, young and old, rich and poor, all people of the world, come gather, come gather, come gather. Listen to me on my harp as I tell you my riddle. And everyone gathers to hear the man. And he starts like this. You're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die. You're going to die, 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 die. Oh, you're all, all wealthy people boasting in your wealth. You're going to die, die, die. Yes, you are, but I'm going to be okay because God's going to rescue me. You're going to die, you're going to die. All of you boasting, you're going to die. And that was fundamentally the psalm. It's like surreal. But actually, the truth is this. We're going to die. And because we're going to die, we live with the reality of that daily. Recently, it's been confronted all the time. People have been confronted by the fact that they know we're vulnerable. And when you know you're vulnerable, when you know you're frail, you look for something to hold on to, something that gives you security, something that you can boast in, something that gives you credibility. 
We know we're fragile. That leads to insecurity, that leads to boasting. Interestingly, it's not seen as sinful. Notice Paul doesn't say, do not boast. Because he knows you're going to, because we're creatures. We're a creator, we're not the creator. Actually, it's interesting how often people boast in their children. You know, boasting in children. Dare I say it, because sometimes the children we know are going to outlive us. <laughs> the dreams. See, so often people say, oh, you're living your dreams for your children. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, I really wanted to play as PlayStation when I was that age. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, living the dreams. But, you know, actually it's very common in the Bible. It's amazing how often in the Bible people are, even the way they name their children, there's a boast in their children. Which is why God introduced circumcision. It's a reminder to say we are weak, but God is strong. It is a reminder to say in your vulnerability, you still need God. And Paul is angry with the Galatians because they're turning what is a sign of weakness into a sign of strength and boasting about it. Look, I doubt they're saying, look at me, but they're sitting there saying, look, look, you need to be like this, you need to be like me, because I am circumcised, therefore I am a better Christian than you are. And there's this boast in weakness. That's so common in our society. You know, when you say to someone, I'm going through this, oh, oh you, you have no idea what I went through. Sometimes it's people trying to understand, but sometimes you can sit there thinking, is this a boasting competition who's had it hardest? Because sometimes people's security is actually I got through something and Paul is saying don't boast in this people try to hold on to anything even that which is weak to try and boast so how do we solve such a solution well let's look at this all boasts sadly let you down when Wall Street crashes what do we see sadly you see people jumping out of windows Why is that? Because their boast was in their wealth. Their boast was in their security. And when that's gone, ah! Teams don't bring it home. (laughs) You know, sport is the most unpredictable thing. You can't boast in anything in that. Suddenly, something that you had your career plan and something happens and it changes and your, your boast is no longer your promotional thing. You may no longer be the youngest person in the company to be in that position. It changes. Things change. Reputations can be ruined like that. Think of a Matt Hancock. Overnight, bang, reputation ruined. Sometimes we go to blow our boast trumpet. We say, look at this, and (laughs) comes out, rather than a great sound. But boasting, not boasting, is not an option. So Galatians 6, 16 gives you the answer, the solution. Our boast... And our boast as believers in Christ is this. We boast in the cross of Christ. We boast in what he's done. There's two big ideas here. The first is we boast in the Lord. And that's quite a common boast. We've seen that regularly through the Psalms. Think of Gideon. When Gideon's got his army, at one point he's got 20,000 people. And suddenly God comes to him and says, listen, you can't have that number. Because actually... If you go with that number, you'll be boasting in what you've done, not in what you've done, what I've done. Therefore, you're only having 300, so you can boast in the Lord. It's a common thought. But actually, Paul brings something completely different into this understanding. He says, I want you to boast at God's moment of vulnerability. I want you to boast at the Lord's apparent sign of weakness. The cross of Jesus Jesus, the God-man, at his most vulnerable. The might, so often you hear the boast, if the mighty hands of God will come. The outstretched arms of the Lord are on my side. Well, at the cross, this is what you see. The mighty hands are nailed to the cross. The outstretched arms are outstretched across the crucifixion. We boast in the exposure and the ridicule of the God-man. Our God is not like any other boast. Any other boast is, look at me, look how good this is, look how I've achieved this, look how wonderful, woohoo! God's boast is, look at what I've done for you. Look at what I've done for you. Look at how valuable you are. 
Look at how precious you are. Look at how incredible my creation is. How loved you are by the God of the universe that I would do this for you. And I do this for you personally, for your community, and for the new creation. Our God is like no other boast. And this boast will never let us down. Because we know he has done it, it's been achieved. And we can know for a fact our name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. We've been bought. We've been bought about a salvation and a new creation. We're in it. Our boast is our hiding place where you go at times of trouble, when you feel vulnerable. For us, that's the cross. For us, the boast that we should make is the boast that says, I'm running to Jesus right now. This is where I want to be. Isn't it funny? I suddenly realize when we have communion, it's a boast. Communion is us boasting in what Jesus has done for us. When we break the bread and we drink the wine, which sadly we couldn't do, if we did that, actually that is the boast. This is the cross of Christ. This is the body of Christ broken for me. This is the blood shed for me so that we can have this amazing eternity. So today, be aware. You're going to boast. You're going to boast. Let's boast in the cross of Christ. Let's boast in that which has changed our lives. Let's boast in that which has given you a relationship with God. Let's boast in that which has created a community that can be utterly life-changing and world-changing. And let's boast in the cross that's brought about a new creation. That is why we don't have to be circumcised. And you'll be glad to know that is why we're not finishing this meeting with a little minor operation for certain people in this room. We will finish by boasting in the cross of Christ. So can we just stand... If you're able to around. Just lift your hands. Father, I want to thank you that we can boast in the greatest moment of world history. That our God so loved the world that he sent his only beloved son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That on that cross, you died for all the sin of the world. You made it possible for us to have this relationship. You, at that moment, when your outstretched arms are stretched across a piece of wood, when your mighty hand is pierced with a nail, that is the moment where eternity kissed time and you made it possible for us again to have this relationship with you for eternity. Lord, I pray you'd help us. Fill us today with your spirit. Excite us by that amazing truth that that is what we will boast in. That is what we will take wherever we go. In your awesome, amazing name. Amen.